Ah, bonjour, moi moi, bon dia, merhaba, privyet, ni hao, and uh, bog. <laughs> it's me, table. Now, uh, I feel this is something that's important. It's something that I haven't uh, haven't touched on. Uh, the reason I've avoided it is because I feel like it impacts upon the design of things. But we're going to talk about triforcing. Now, triforcing is important for those of you that... Uh, are very keen on the uh, most amount of protection possible uh, on a vehicle. So we're going to go through triforcing because if I, I, I've never really understood it. So if I can understand it, hopefully I can explain that to you and we can get some kind of uh, consensus exactly as to what triforcing is and how it can benefit us. Okay. So without further ado, we're going to go through things and try and understand it. So triforce armor is a me method of building that minimizes the spread of damage to selected parts on a bot and or reduces the overall mass of the bot. So Triforcing does two things, reduces your weight and allows you to spread damage across your bot to non-essential areas, okay? See, so fair enough, don't you think? <laughs> so basics, Triforce Armor uses prisms and tetras to create gaps between layers of blocks and prevent damage spread from one layer to another. Using prisms and tetras does reduce the armor value because they have less health points as full cubes but makes each layer of blocks more effective. Triforcing is also used as a mass saving measure for aerial bots, or any bot for that matter. So, Triforcing reduces your overall health points. In fact, it makes your armor more effective than solid blocks. Okay, it also reduces your mass. Okay, fair enough. Side note, Triforcing is a great idea for the classic game mode, so Team Deathmatch. However, it's not as great in the new game mode, which is called what is the new game? Battle Arena. <laughs> Where having more blocks in general is a better option. There you have it. Triforcing may work better in higher tiers of the new game mode. It says may, so may work. Uh, five, six, seven, etc. But in lower tiers, one to four, it's better to simply use more blocks. Okay, so one to four, Triforcing is not important in the new game mode. However, in classic, yes. Okay, so fair enough. Normal armor. For most purposes, armor made of solid cubes can be sufficient. It is capable of absorbing a large amount of damage and distributing it throughout its structure, but it is weak to sustained fire and several hits to the same location can e easily penetrate through. The disadvantages of blocks is that then, you can penetrate through. So, uh, does this work? Yep, okay, solid block of armor. We've all, we're all familiar with that, it's a 3x4, 3x3x4, three by three by four. okay, fine. Let's have a look how the damage distributes. So, after one plasma hit, uh, red... What, where's the description gone? Yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so the red bit is where the plasma hits. One, red is the hit, green damage spread. So, let's go back to that. So the plasma hits here, boink, and you lose three around it and it spreads through like that. Fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. The, we've tried four. Oh, no, wait. Green damage block pierced all the way through the armor plate. Ah, right, okay, so this picture, it shows that the plasma hits the front, but it penetrates three deep. Okay, fine. I understand that. That's understandable that the plasma will distribute through the armor of solid blocks. Fine. Simple Triforce. Simple Triforce involves the placement of prisms in rows. This prevents damage spread from one row to the next and increases how long each layer can protect against continuous fire, such as SMG. Okay, so it protects against continuous fire. Okay, fine. Prism in rows. Fair enough. Let's pull the image up. Let's do it right. Let's learn it right. I know it make the video longer, but let's do it right. So it's got blocks on the edges and prisms there. Row of four, so it's six in total in, in width. Fine. Simple triforcing. That's probably where we're going to start. Uh, in a 3D block, triforcing will look like this. So they're all facing the same way. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Fair enough. Simple triforcing. Uh, hello, internet? Yep, okay. <laughs> After one SMG hit, so it hits here, it distributes along the row and doesn't continue forward. Fine. Fine, I get that. Like, so far, not so complicated. Did I click back? <laughs> Went too far. <laughs> right. Uh, damage does not spread to other rows in the armor. So, unlike the solid block, the damage doesn't spread through. It stays on that row. Fine. 
Complex Triforce. Although for many purposes, simple Triforce is sufficient to defend against damage, when a sufficiently damaging weapon such as a rail cannon or a plasma launcher impacts the armor, damage can be spread to the block supporting the individual rows or armor and trigger a collapse of underlying layers. This can lead to the destruction of many blocks as they simply fall off when the supports fail. Fair enough. Okay, so with plasmas and rails, that could be a problem. Several rows of Triforce falling from one plasma hit, red hit, green damage, pink blocks that, that took no damage but fell off due to no support. Okay, so let's look at this. This is where it differs. So, simple Triforcing, the plasma or the rail hits here, the damage spreads throughout this row and into the supporting blocks, and then these six prisms just fall away. They took no damage, but they just fall away. So, simple Triforcing, it seems, will protect you from SMG fire, fine, but not from plasma and rail, okay. To circumvent this issue, to circumvent this issue, it is possible to link rows or Triforce prisms and produce a sheet of Triforce. Sheets of Triforce can be linked to the rest of the craft at their edges or internally using cubes to connect them together. This type of armor maintains the ability of Triforce of preventing damage between uh, damage penetration while maintaining integrity and being far more resistant to falling off from loss of support structures. As the curved inner, as the curved inner has most of the damage dispersion qualities of the higher armor than a prism, they should be used to, for spaced armor of this variety, placing a layer of them along the bottom of a plane if the undetachable side is facing upward, allows the damage to stay in the bottom layer of armor. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> to circumvent this issue, issue, it is possible to link rows of Triforce prisms and produce a sheet of Triforce. The sheets of Triforce can be linked to the rest of the craft at their edges or internally using cubes to connect them together. Fine. On the edges... Uh, and internally by cubes. Fine. This type of armor maintains the ability of Triforce of preventing damage penetration while maintaining integrity and being far more resistant to falling off and loss of support structures. Fine. So it means add more blocks. Got that. As the curved inner has most of the damage dispersion qualities of and higher armor than a prism, the curved inner, as the curved inner, okay. Uh, they should be used for space armor of this variety. Okay, so use the curved inner uh, rather than a prism. Okay, placing uh, a layer of them along the bottom of a plane if the unattachable side is facing upward allows the damage to stay on the bottom layer of the armor. Oh, right, okay, so you use the curved inner with the unattachable side facing up creates a layer that will not let, allow it to spread up into the rest of the vehicle. Okay, fine. Interesting, very interesting. Tetra weave. Tetra weave, also known as Tetra sponge. So we have simple Triforce, uh, Triforce, and now Tetra weave. Tetra weave, also known as Tetra sponge, are a special version of complex Triforce armor. Without any other non Tetra cubes, it is the lightest of armor, armored cubes possible in Robocraft, while still being expandable in three dimensions. Tetra weave, however, is <laughs> weaker structurally, uh, owing to the fact that it has free connection points. Fine, so it's the lightest, but it's also weaker structurally, uh, in a manner that does not allow straight lines, so it's difficult to work with as well, and is a lot poorer at taking damage to its surface than flat prism triforce. For this reason, it is usually only used on the inside of a craft while using prisms on the outside. The first craft which used this were thruster sticks, but is now often used in large hovers as well due to their low carry capacity. Okay, interesting. So Tetra Weave is an internal form of triforcing. Advantages, 30% lighter than normal full block armor. Useful in aerial builds. Can still redirect damage away from functional parts if done correctly, fine. Disadvantages, less total armor than a full than full block armor. More difficult to construct and takes longer to build. Fine, that's okay. It's twice as possible for a cube to be destroyed due to disconnection than prism armor. So Tetra Weave is weak or weaker against rails and plasmas. Fine. 
may redirect damage towards the functional parts if built incorrectly. Increases the chance of losing chunks of blocks to cover. Fine. There are two different main ways of tetra weave with some small varieties. Weaving across the diamond, weaving across and diamond walls. While both are identical to in each horizontal layer, having these layers parallel to each other other than perpendicular changes a lot of the properties. Okay, fine. Tetra sponge using cross hatching to link unconnected rows of diagonal tetras vertically to each other. Let's have a look. So, cross hatching. Now, cross hatching is where you have some lines and you go across like that. That's cross hatching. So, line, 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 and then cross hatching like that. So, you can see in the picture that we have the prism triforcing uh, on the edges, and we can see how that's connected there. And inside, you have uh, like Tetra, I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but you have a, on the white, it's like tetra, tetra, and so they stick together like that, but the base is up, base is down, and you can see that the other one goes in the other direction. The orange layer is in the opposite direction, and the blue goes back the same as the white, and the yellow is the same as the orange, and it goes on like that. Okay, that's interesting. I never heard of tetra weave until now, so uh, tetra weave. And then tetra sponge using a perpendicular prism spine. Let's have a look. That looks, I mean, that looks nice. That looks very interesting. I could see that on the front of a craft, easy. So uh, again, it goes in diagonal rows and then it has prism, prism spine inside. Again, the prisms are separate. Interesting, okay, tetra weave. It could, it could have something to it, you know? It could have something to it. Oh! <laughs> Right, tetra weave. So, tetra weave or tetra sponge is the term. Positives and negatives. A bot that is fully triforced has fewer health points than full block armor. Yes, we know this. A full block has six connection points, so to, to destroy it, it must be drained of armor, and all six connected blocks must be destroyed. Prisms or tetras only have four or three, respectively. Fine. Triforcing reduces the connection points to allow damage to spread where it is desired. So in a way, a shot can break a key part while all the triforcing, where all the triforcing is connected. An example would be alternating prism armor. If for some reason your skirt of the prism layer is destroyed, the entire armor is gone. Yes, it does have the possibility if you don't do triforcing right that you can lose entire chunks. It is good to use anchor points or a spine to hold and add connection points to your Triforce armor so that it is less likely to be separated from the rest of the craft. A mix of full cubes with, and Triforce with anchor points combines the best of both worlds. Selective damage dispersion and a high degree of armor. So it's a good way to use it in conjunction. Okay, a single, sheet, uh, a single Triforce sheet built on the garage floor. So... Triforce sheet, right there. That's a Triforce sheet. So it's prism, 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 prism. Fine. And underneath you'd have anchor points. Fair enough. I understand that. Uh, a 3D structure of layered Triforce sheets. So again, it's prism, 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 prism. But where we saw it flat, they just turned it like this. And again, it's just prism, 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 prism. And then behind it, prism, 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 prism with cubes added in as anchor points. You can see there's an anchor point uh, at the top corner nearest to us and at the bottom corner nearest to us as well. Okay, fine. Got it. Triforce with some anchor points. Uh, oh, it shows us the damage. The spread of damage through a sheet after uh, and SMG hit. Okay, after, after SMG hit. So, the SMG hit comes in uh, on the red section and it spreads to its neighbors and to the one behind only, but it doesn't spread any further because there's no connection to that white prism next to it. There's no connection, okay. Oh. <laughs> right, uh, and then on the 3D structure of layered Triforce, the SMG hit comes in there, it spreads up and down, uh, and then to the side, but it doesn't continue through. It doesn't continue to penetrate through. Fair enough, it definitely has advantages. It definitely does. Uh, trivia. Triforcing may also use multiple connection points to attach to different sections of a bot. For example, a seat has two connection points, which may be used individually by placing two prisms or tetras facing away from each other, or something similar, where the 
where the blocks don't touch. For more cubes that have multiple connection points, see connection points. Other methods sometimes known as bricking, sponging or cactusing may prefer to placing blocks strategically in zigzag, zigzagged patterns or placing tetras frequently to soak up damage. These methods can frequently be better than creating a brick or electroplating a bot. Okay, so we can look into bricking, sponging or cactusing if you want to see them, but that's triforcing. So I feel more informed with triforcing there. Uh, it seems that using it in moderation can definitely work out. It definitely helps from the sounds of it for hovers and flyers. We'll just try that there. I'll try some tetra weave. Uh, but that's that. So I hope, hopefully, me going through that with you um, has helped. Because uh, for me, reading up on it is, yeah, I've avoided it purposely. Like, I just haven't got into it. But if you have any other experiences or advice on triforcing where something's worked or something hasn't worked, then uh, let me know. Or if you have a bot on the RoboShop that has triforcing on it, let me know and we'll, we'll test it and we can get some examples of triforcing in action and see how it performs. So we have an open table. I hope that's a, a nice intro into, uh, into triforcing and we'll start applying that onto some builds and we'll see how we go. So, open table. Take care of yourselves. If you have liked what you've seen here today, please like, comment and share it. It does, us, it does so much help for the channel for you to do that. So if I have helped in any way, let me know. <laughs> and I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourself. I said that for, what, three times? Let's just end the show. Right? Boo, 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 boo.